if you don't know anything about financial literacy and credit, how are you going to be able to put yourself in a good position? So you need to go get your financial coach. You need to get somebody like myself or somebody who really understands what finances is. They can tell you how to break down your credit profile. I can look at a credit profile and tell you what your credit score is. I've got a little over 40 people that are incarcerated wow. who have reached out to me via social media and said, bro, because of you, mm. like I'm incarcerated, but now I'm coming home and I got good credit. Wow. You know, it's crazy because I used to always say, um, it's not about the location, it's about the person. Mm -hmm. And so for me now, I realize that it is nothing wrong with being planted in new soil as well. Mm. Hey, hey, wait, 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 wait. I know you want to watch this next video, but listen, if you are an entrepreneur, business coach, business consultant, or a small business owner who has a story and wants to learn how to create multiple streams of income from your story, I need you to text me right now. My book, to 646-687-4152. That is my personal number. I have been an author for over 12 years. I've written 10 books. Four of them have been bestsellers and I've sold over 100,000 books. But I've also helped a lot of my clients take their expertise and put it into a story, then create multiple streams of income from that. So I wanna help you do the same thing. So text my book to 646-687-4152. All right, all right, let's go back to the video. All right, so welcome to another awesome episode of Inside the Vault with Ash Cash, the greatest money mindset show on the planet. We have one of the premier, mm. or dare I say the premier, mm. credit repair, credit experts mm. for the culture. We got Dion Coopwood in the building. But beyond being a credit repair or credit expert, he is a mindset and financial literacy coach raised in Chicago, residing in Atlanta, showing individuals and small business owners how to leverage Metro 2 compliance to start, grow, and scale their business. Absolutely. What up, brother? How you doing, man? I'm all good, baby. Yo, so here's the deal, man. I, you know, I want to I wanna, uh, come out the gate swinging, right? Because... Um, you know, I've been, you know, in the financial education space for over, uh, close to two decades, actually. Mm. Um, I wrote a book called what the FICO 12 steps to repairing your credit. Yep. Um, and it was, you know, well received, sold a lot of copies. I helped a lot of people, um, you know, get, get into the right mindset as it, as it relates to, uh, fixing their credit because credit can help you, uh, build wealth. Mm. Um, but you, you've been introducing this concept of Metro 2 um, to, to the culture, yeah. um, and I think it's, it's, it's like a breakthrough. It's like a phenomenon, but then you took it a step further, yeah. right? You took it a step further, and you have like literally created software yep. that could really help people like fix their credit, like almost like a automation so I want us yeah. to talk about that yeah. but before we go there for those who, who may not know <laughs> who is Dion Coopwood man <laughs> man like you said uh born and raised on the south side of Chicago um just one of those people who just want to just give people uh, a better opportunity yeah you know I think that life grants us all the opportunities that we want need and gotta have yeah and it's really up to us to go out there but I know that you need some pillars in the community yeah who can help you go from where you currently are to where you're looking to go and so my life goal is just to help people just you know elevate and get to that next level yeah and and, and what 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 is Metro 2 and why did you choose like what like why credit like why is credit yeah, yeah. the vehicle or the thing that you've used to help you know push people's lives to the next level? All right, this is what's crazy. Um, it's you know most people when they are doing something, it's kind of like and they not successful with it. Most times because they just kind of pull something out of nowhere and mm -hmm. they trying to try something new mm -hmm. or they trying what they saw somebody else do. For me, um, when I left my job, that I was I mean it was great. I mean making one hundred and thirty thousand a year, working four days a week. Mm -hmm. I just, it was something inside of me that said, this can't be it. Mm. I said, this is not it. And so I walked away from a great job um, at that time and I leveraged my credit. Mm -hmm. So I had $40,000 in credit as that I leveraged in order to start the journey that you're seeing now. Mm. And so for me, I said, you know what, if, if credit was able to get me to get me through the last seven to eight years, I'm going on eight years mm. of entrepreneurship, eight years, like I'm mentally unemployable. Mm. 
all off of having forty thousand dollars in credit, mm. leaving a job. I said, if credit could do this for me, mm. I wonder if I put something together, if I make it make sense, if I can help other people. How many people can I really help? Mm. So I say, you know what? Uh, credit has done me good. And I want to be able to give this information to everybody else. Mm -hmm. So that's the reason why we're here. That's the reason why I'm here today, because credit changed my life. Mm. Like I always tell people, not when people see me, they we go places. I always say, look, man, I love credit. Mm. And everybody be just screaming, I love credit, yeah, I love credit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, it's, and it's like, that's my thing. That's my motto, because I know what it has done for me. Like, it's like, it's crazy when you look at statistics and they say that 33% of Americans, which means that one out of every three people got mm. bad credit. Wow. So that means that two out of three got good credit. Yeah. But it's crazy when you see people that say, well, man, I ain't got bad credit. I got a 700. But yet you financially struggling. Ooh. Explain to me why. Oh. Why are you struggling and you got good credit? Why you got a 700 plus, but yet you're not leveraging it, right? Mm. And so for me, I leveraged my credit in order to get me where I'm at. So I say, you know what? I know I can take the information that I have and I can, I can deploy it to the community and I can help some people as well. Wow, wow. I mean, that hurt though, right? Because I know somebody's watching yeah. who has that 700 credit score. Mm. Uh, who's 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 proud? They wear it on like that's like they yeah. wear that on, on on like a badge. Um, what 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 are what are some easy ways for those who have good credit? Yeah, you know how can they leverage their credit? Yeah, well, what I'll say is this: because a lot of people, um, they they fearful. Even even people with good credit, they fear because they say, "Well, I don't know what to do with it." Yeah, the, uh, what you have to do is you got to learn how to leverage OPM, mm -hmm. which is other people's money, right? Yeah. The very first thing that everybody can do, and this is the play. You can go to bankbranchlocator.com mm -hmm. and you can see, you can literally go on Bank Branch Locator and you can put in your particular zip code and where you live at and it'll show you all of the banks in your area. Mm. Like you could, like it'll show you all of the banks in your area. So now you know who you need to be going to to build relationships with, who you need to be going to to get money from. Because if you got a 700 plus mm. and you walk in the door and you got a strong credit profile, mm. you're in great position to be able to get some money from the bank mm -hmm. and be able to leverage and go ahead and start growing, scale your business, mm -hmm. right? But most people don't know where to go. So that's where you start. But I'll give you, I'll, I'll make it even easier. I'll give a few plays for an individual who, let's just say they got bad credit. Mm -hmm. And they say, well, I want to leverage my business credit. I got a business that I've been running and I'm making a little bit of money. And I want to know where I can go to get some money from. All right, well, from that perspective, uh, you can go to Headway Capital, right? They can go to headwaycapital.com. Mm -hmm. And if they've been in business for, let's just say, a year, making maybe three, four, five thousand dollars $5,000 a month, give or take, and they can leverage just their business credit and be able to go get up to $100,000. Mm. Easy money, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, let's say the person said, I just got started in business. I, I got a business less than a year old, and I still want to be able to leverage my personal credit. I got good personal credit. Man, you go to Wells Fargo and get up to $50,000, no doc loan. Mm. That means you ain't got to provide no documentation. Mm -hmm. You can leverage your personal credit, and you get a line of credit in your business name. Mm. Let's just say somebody said, well, I ain't got a business. I ain't trying to start a business, but I want a line of credit to maybe just put some extra cash or put some security behind just my lifestyle and my goals, right? All right, cool. You can go to nasafederalcreditunion.com, mm. N A S A F C U.com, mm. and just with just your personal credit, they give you up to fifteen thousand. Wow! And they ain't even gonna run your credit. That's gonna pre-qualify you mm. for the money, so you can see if you want to take the money or not. It's up to you. Mm. So my, my again, my question is: is mm. why do people have good credit, mm. but they're not leveraging it, right? Wow! Wow! And, and so and so, I hear this all the time, and I'm sure if if somebody googles it right now. You know, um, a lot of times people say, man, you know, there's a there's a wealth gap. Yeah. Um, you know, there's no access to capital. Oh, man. Right. And what you're saying right now don't sound like an access to capital <laughs> problem. No, no, that no. That sounds like an access to information, That's access it. That's to it. being connected to the right people, That's it. access to knowing the right plays. Yep. But to me, it sounds like if you understand um if you if you have good credit, mm -hmm. if you understand the rules and 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 how to access this money, yeah, that's plentiful. Yeah, that you can have that access to capital, and now with that access to capital, you can now start using that to build wealth. You know, whether it's starting your business, whether mm -hmm. it's getting to that, you know, uh, buying an income producing asset. Yeah, and so. Um, what about the people who don't have good credit, mm -hmm. right? The people who um, have made some mistakes, don't have good credit. What's their solution? Well, the reality is that just because you have bad credit, you don't have to live with it. That's a choice. That's a decision. If you decide to live with bad credit, that's on you. That's yeah. a choice you made, right? It's just like being in a bad relationship. If you're going to stay there, that's a choice that mm -hmm. you're making, yeah. right? So the concept is you need to be able to get your financial coach. 
That's it. It's simple as that. It's just like if, if somebody say, hey, listen, I don't like the way I look. I want to be able to lose weight. You go, you need, you can't just try to go to the gym by yourself. Mm -hmm. You may not be able to with, withstand a storm mm -hmm. because as time go on, your commitment to the process is going to determine your progress. Yeah. So it's the same thing when you're talking about financial literacy and credit. If you don't know anything about financial literacy and credit, how are you going to be able to put yourself in a good position? So you need to go get your financial coach. You need to get somebody like myself or somebody who really understands what finances is. They can tell you how to break down your credit profile. I can look at a credit profile and tell you what your credit score is. Mm. So you have to have some type of experience, some type of knowledge, some, have some, some wherewithal to be able to tell people what their situation looks like from a credit perspective to be able to guide them in the right direction. So if they got bad credit, yeah. then they need to tap in with a financial coach. Somebody can say, okay, here's where you are. Here's where you are. This is where we're looking to go. Tell me your goals. Tell me your dreams. And then they'll give you a diagnosis from a credit perspective on yeah. where you need to go. It's just the same thing like going to the doctor. Yeah. If we're hurting, we don't go to the doctor and tell the doctor Facts. what you going, what kind of medicine you going to give me. Facts. You say, okay, look, doc, this is why I'm hurting at. Yeah. Same thing with credit. You say, okay, look. You the credit doctor. Yeah. This is why I'm hurting. Yeah. I'm, I'm down bad financially. What do I need to do to put myself back in a good position and let them help you out? Yeah. That's where you need to start with a coach. Yeah. And, and, and you, you've been helping a lot of people, man. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. um, behind the scenes, you told me, um, you know, about, about your Metro 2 software. Yeah. Uh, but you've really been using your platform and the tools and your knowledge to even help people behind the wall, yeah, right? Helping people behind the wall, people coming home, you giving them opportunities. Talk, talk to us about that a little yeah, bit. Yeah, at this point, man, I've got a little over 40 people that are incarcerated wow. who have reached out to me via social media and said, bro, because of you, mm. like, I'm incarcerated, but now I'm coming home and I got good credit. Wow. And now I have an opportunity to be able to go ahead and you know, leverage my credit to run some of the plays that you're talking about. But I just wanted to let you know, like, bro, I'm really in jail. I'm locked up. Wow. And I, I'm coming home with good credit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, dang, that's crazy. And yeah. then out of the 40 plus people at this point now, about seven, eight of those individuals have told me, like, I didn't have a chance at going to get a job yeah. because of my record is, is messed up. But again, because of your software and because of information that you're teaching, I was able to go ahead and start my own credit repair organization. Wow. And now I'm making some money and I'm able to feed my family. And it's, it's no better feeling for me yeah. than to be able to show people the way and be able to really help people. Like, that's crazy to me. Yeah. And so it's like you really understand that it gets to the point where it's more so about the impact over the income. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you're, you're looking at your reach and it's going far beyond you, your yeah. family, and, you know, the intermediateness of, you know, what you thought could actually be possible. Yeah. And to help people like that, that's, it's, it's amazing, bro. Yeah, man. No, I can imagine, man, because, like, I know, you know, as an author, um, you know, I've had a lot of people reach out to me. Uh, both who are who are still behind the wall, yeah. uh, people who have come home, who mm -hmm. are like, "Yo, your books help me." Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that's a that's a different feeling. Yeah. When um, you just put out the work, being obedient. Yes. And then that obedience is now allowing you to touch people that you didn't even know you were like affecting. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Um, I mean, but on, on a personal note, how has um, you know South Side of Chicago? Uh, moved to Atlanta, mm -hmm. um, and you know you. Ha I mean, f from the outside looking in, you had a phenomenal year. Like your growth <laughs> has been, like you know, a, a, you know, next level. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? How has moving and making the decision to like move to Atlanta? How's that uh, affected your 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 growth? You know, it's crazy because I used to always say. Um, it's not about the location; it's about the person. Mm -hmm. And so for me now, I realize that. And there's nothing wrong with being planted in new soil as well. Mm. So for me, it was just an idea of me planting myself into new soil yeah. and me being able to, you know, be fertilized with a great environment. I think that um, from a from a standpoint of what does success look like, you said like outside looking in, you look like you had a phenomenal year, mm -hmm. but people don't actually see the work either, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yeah. And so for me, um, I've always worked hard. I've always, you know what I'm saying, like just put my best foot forward. Yeah. But also what ended up happening was, not only did I get like the right coaches, mm -hmm. but I also had the right environment. So that's that saw you, right? Mm -hmm. So now, as opposed to being in Chicago and me being um, the top guy at really that at the bottom, mm -hmm. because I was the top guy, yeah. but it was really the bottom. And I say it was really the bottom because when I came to Atlanta and I'm around people like Ash Cash, my mm -hmm. guy Carter, mm -hmm. you know, the Nehemiah Davises and people like that. I'm coming in from what I thought was the top and mm -hmm. now I'm at the bottom. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so I'm really seeing that there's another level to this mm -hmm. thing. I'm like, yo, wait a minute. So you mean to tell me, you know, making six figures a year, that's that's really not, that's not that's good. payroll money. Yeah, that's like, I'm like, yo, that's like, so now it's, it's crazy because 
I went from making six figures a year to seven figures a year. Now I'm paying my team right. six figures Facts. a year. Yeah, yeah. You know, so it's like it's a totally different concept. Yeah. It's a totally different way of thinking. It's a totally different mindset. And so, yeah, it's like yeah, you had a phenomenal year. But I, I, I will honestly say, bro, like a lot of work went into that. Like yeah. it wasn't just. Oh yeah, he just had a phenomenal year. He just moved to Atlanta because it's not going. The, I don't want nobody to look at this right. and say, "I'm going to oh, move well, to I'm just going to move to right, Atlanta. Right, right, I'm going to move to Texas, and nah, it's nah, going to happen." Nah, 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 nah you're going to have to put in some work. work. Kind of yeah. like me and you when I first yeah. met you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, no, nah, this Ash, like yeah. this, like, like what's up? Like let's exchange numbers. Like yeah. I'm locked in. Yeah. When can I pull up? Yeah. I'm not like I'm working. Facts. 100%. I'm putting in the work. 100%. You feel me? Yeah. And 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 that and that you know I, I, I'm glad that you said that because you know that goes back to credit. That goes back to success. That goes back to running a business. Yep. Everything. Um. You know you have to put in the work, right? Um. The opportunity and the proximity yep. and you know uh, the access makes putting the work that much fruitful yes but but i don't care if you if if, if you around jay-z and beyonce <laughs> every single day but you ain't putting in no work that that association ain't doing it, nothing for it, you it, it ain't it ain't gonna work out for you well, what would you say is your, your your number one lesson that you learned uh 2022 wow um wow i think that um i really finally realized that because i because i went to i went to college and yeah. High school, and it's like I've watched people who went to college and they done more college than me, got more degrees than a thermometer. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it's like you know, you look at them, and you like more degrees than a thermometer. Yeah, it's like I that. why, why, ain't, why it's not working out for you? Yeah, and so for me, I for, like the biggest lesson I learned is that uh, a mentor and a coach can take you way further than a teacher and a professor can. Yeah, it's like. You know, we go to college because this is we were told to go to school, mm -hmm. get a good education so we can get a what? A good job. That's yeah. what they told us to do. Yeah. And we followed that system. And what I realized is that people look at people like successful entrepreneurs like me and you, they say, Man, that's that's a scam. Yeah. Well, no, you just still confused about Facts. money. Yeah, that's yeah, what yeah, scams yeah, stand yeah, for yeah, to yeah, me because yeah, yeah. you you already grown right. and you still and you broke. broke. Facts. It's like you grown you and you broke. And broke. That's and it's, crazy. That's though. the real scam. In facts. You the, you done went to school and people just, fight for that. They fight for they the, fight. To, to stay there. You feel me? Yeah. They, yeah and yeah. they like, yo, I went to school. They brag about their degrees. Re res respectfully. Yeah, yeah. Respectfully. <laughs> you done went to school and it ain't no disrespect. Yeah, yeah. But you got to look at the situation. Like, all right, cool. Let's say you got ten friends and yeah. six or seven of y'all went to college. Yeah. And if y'all not in the financial position that y'all in, yeah. What's wrong with saying, you know what? All right. These these old keys ain't opened up new doors. All right. So for me, I realized this year when I got around high level performing entrepreneurs that were on another level who made me feel like I'm like, I thought I was doing well and I realized that I can do better. Yeah. I said, wow, okay, well what 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 are they doing that I'm not doing? And I'm realizing that everybody had a, a, a mentor that was performing at a level that they wanted to perform at. They had yeah. a coach that was performing at a level that they wanted to perform at. Yeah. And I said, that's the missing piece. Mm. I never had nobody that I can plug into to give me information to get me to that next level. Mm. I was always the guy that was being plugged into. Mm. So I was the outlet for everybody. I didn't have an outlet. Yeah. And so coming here, I realized that I needed a mentor. I needed yeah. a coach to go to that next level. Yeah. And so having like a Neil and having like a Myron Golden yeah. who can give me information and give me plays to take me to that next level, I'm like, y'all, this is, this is it. Mm. And so people are missing the fact that, all right, cool, you went to school, you got education, you might have a decent job, but mm. If that's not what you desire to be like, then cool. You can't go. You can't go to a professor no more mm -hmm. and think that they're going to. Okay, the professors are making what? Mm -hmm. Do you want to make what the professor make? If yeah. that's that's the question, do you want to make what your professor make? Yeah. Most people say, Nah, I don't right. want to make sixty, seventy, eighty thousand dollars. I don't. Right. I would like to make that a month. If you had to choose, mm -hmm. okay, cool. Then you're gonna have to get you a coach. You're gonna have to get you a, a mentor, somebody that's gonna be able to give you the information to go to the next level. That's that was my biggest lesson because yeah. I didn't have one. Yeah, I came to Atlanta like. All right, I'm gonna figure this thing out. Right. It, that no, right. You need somebody to guide you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I and I and you know I I hope that they hear you. Mm. You know I hope that people realize that this is somebody who was making six figures, um, just uprooted and took his family from you know from 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 where you were, went to to Atlanta, and so all these people who who are like oh I got these responsibilities. You had a family. Wife, wife, three, three kids, right? And my mom, I take care. Look, wife, three kids, and a mama, uprooted and just said, "I have to take a risk." Yep. Right. So all my, all my risk, all my people who are thinking about taking risk, it's riskier staying where you are. <laughs> yes. Right. Yes. Because 
you you uprooted your family, wife, three kids, and a mama you're taking care of, come to Atlanta as a person who was making six figures, now you're a seven-figure earner, and dare I say, you definitely go, go, go in high eights this year. That ain't even, that ain't that ain't even, even question. no question, because I see no how question. you moving. That ain't even no question. Look, and in, in less than two years, you're, you're building a $10 million or more business, paying your team six figures and more, all because you, you bet on yourself. You know what it was though? I took I took the things that I was I was I was really at, at, at certain points I was making an excuse to not move. Yeah. And I realized I said, man, the things that I could buy with these excuses is costing me too much money. Oof. I was like, these excuses are too expensive. I said, yeah. okay, cool. So now that I got that figured out, I said, what do I need to do? I said, I took the things that, like you said, having a wife, yeah. having the kids that I'm taking care of, having a mom, and I said, you know what? These things that are holding me back and that I'm making an excuse for, those are the things that actually are motivating and inspiring me to actually go ahead and get this stuff done. Yeah. So I said, okay, cool. For my wife, I'm going to move. Mm. For my kids, I'm going to move. Yeah. For my mom, like they deserve this lifestyle. Yeah. I am going to uproot. I, I'm, I'm going to uproot. I'm going to move. Yeah. And I'm going to put us in a better environment. Yeah. Like even when I moved, I tripled my bills and expenses for the month. Mm. So that made me, I put my back against the wall. Wow. And I'm like, I got to go get it. Yeah. Like, I don't, like I don't even have a choice at this, yeah, at this yeah, moment, yeah, right? Yeah. And so for me, I'm like, yeah, everything that, that, that feared me, that made me be fearful of being able to just execute and go do it, I, I took that and I capsulated that into motivation yeah. and inspiration. I said, all right, cool. I'm, I'm going to I'm I'm go make it happen. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and you know, I, I want to pivot a little bit towards um, this risk, right? Like risk mm -hmm. and unknown, right? Because yeah. a lot of times people have these opportunities um, and they see what they believe is 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 change or the unknown and don't know how to deal with it, right? Yeah. And so lately there's been this phenomenon called artificial intelligence, yeah. AI. Yeah. Um, and some people are have embraced it. Yeah. Uh, some people have have looked at it and said, "Oh my God, these ju these, these are these, you know the AI is bad. It's gonna take over the world. It's yeah. like doomsday. It's yeah. gonna you know stop everything." Um, you know, I know for myself, AI has been changing my my life like fast. Like, mm -hmm. you know, as an author, you know, I teach people how to how to write books, right, and how to create a six to seven figure business from their books. Yeah. Um, before it would take me, you know, maybe a month, two months to write a book. I use I use AI and did it in five hours. That's crazy. Five hours. That's crazy. Published it in five days. That's crazy. And now it's ready to, to sell. And you've done something similar with Metro 2, artificial <laughs> intelligence. Talk to us about that. You know what's crazy? Um, you said something profound that I don't know if they even picked it up. Mm. You went from, you like, you chopped your time down on how to create a book and publish it in like that, like dang the 10x the time frame, Facts. which gave you more time back, Facts. which gave you more freedom, right? Yeah. And more flexibility. It's kind of like, if we look at, if we look at, let's say the 1900s, they was first building cars because mm -hmm. people were tired of walking. Yeah, people were tired of delivering mail. You sent some mail out two, three days to get there. Mm -hmm. I right, cool now you can get in the car and you can get there an hour, two, three hours. Mm -hmm. Then they started to introduce trains. Then they started to introduce planes. Now it's people that still won't get on the plane to this day. Mm. Right? Okay, cool. So that means that if you drive or take the train somewhere, it's gonna take you eighteen, let's say twenty hours to get from Chicago to California. Mm -hmm. Well, I may take the plane to get there in four hours. I'm gonna mm -hmm. get there faster. Mm -hmm. Artificial intelligence is allowing people to get there faster. Yeah. So when I created the system, I said, okay, cool. I am going to give people the opportunity to have a cleaner, healthier credit profile faster. Mm. So instead of you trying to figure out how to put together the letters, mm. instead of you trying to write the letters yourself, mm. stand up all night. Listen, I, I didn't did this. I'm, mm. I'm speaking from experience. Nice. Let's go. <laughs> We're talking about doing credit enhancement and credit repair. I said, okay, cool. I need to be able to put my mind to something and create something that is going to get people to their financial goals faster. Mm. Because everything about our financial goals start with credit. I don't care what you want to do. I don't care what business you want to start. I don't care what your, what your income goal is for the year. You need some credit in order to get you to where you're trying to go. And so I, I created a Metro 2 compliance system that has artificial intelligence in, it, intelligence in it, and every two to three minutes, it automatically updates itself. Wow. So the letters that are being sent in to, through my system, through the compliance standard, 
whatever results come back from the credit bureaus, it's automatically tracking it. It's got it's got data results matrix inside mm. of it. It's got the artificial intelligence. So every th two to three minutes, it's saying house is getting a better result than home when mm. we send these letters out. Mm. This is getting a better result than there when we send it out. Bold is getting a better result than italicized when mm. we send these letters out. So whatever gets the greatest results, every two to, two to three minutes, it's automatic. It's artificial intelligence. Wow. It's the way of the future. Wow. So I embraced it just like you embraced it. Yeah. And so instead of people having to wait or, or trying to sit up for a day, two, three, four, five hours, putting together two, three letters to send up to the credit bureau mm -hmm. and then waiting on those results. I got a system that is doing everything for you. Wow. One click of a button. All you got to do is download your credit profile, upload it to the system, hit generate one click of a button. We mail and fax and print off everything for you. Mm. And the letters are being generated in like two to three minutes, real time. Mm. You can print them off and look at them. Wow. But, or you could just hit the button and let the system do the work for you. Wow. And now you just sit back and wait. Wow. And now, and because we're using compliance standard, which is totally different concept than factual dispute, now I can break that down too yeah. and make sure everybody understands the difference. But this is why I'm teaching. I'm, I'm gonna hold that class for everybody. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah, break yeah. it down. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. I give a little sauce yeah, so they can yeah. understand yeah. it, right? Yeah, it? But the reality is that instead of you trying to figure this stuff out by yourself, it's a done for you process. Yeah. Like yeah. you don't have to put together the letters. You don't put together letters. You don't got to mail in facts. And because we're using Metro Two compliance, which is a powerful process. We're seeing results, some people in seven days, wow. some 14 days. Now, legally, the credit bureau's got 30 days to respond. Mm -hmm. Normally, when you send in those little regular cookie-cutter letters, they take their sweet time. Yeah. But when you send a compliance letter, it's kind of like, they be like, whoa, whoa. Because mm. it's state standard, and I'll talk about that too, but that's state standard that they put in place. Yeah. So they be like, whoa, wait, wait, hold on, wait. They use a compliance standard. Right. Let's just, let's just, let's comply. Mm. And that's just, that's the way that it works. Wow, wow. And so I want to unpack a couple of things, right, because I know that, you know, you know, I've had bad credit before in the past. Um, and I know that, you know, I, I learned, like I, I became a credit expert by having bad credit. Yep. yep. Right. So I learned, I was like, damn, I got bad credit. So That's I, experience. Right. I had this experience. I had to learn. I was like, all right, bet. All right. There's five categories, payment history, usage ratio, uh, you know, uh, length of credit history, credit mix and, um, new credit. And I was like, all right, these are the five things. All right. If, 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 if I keep my payments low, yep. uh, or, and make sure I pay everything on time. Then, then that's one bucket. Yep. If I make sure that, that that I you know that I have my balance low and I'm not applying for cards or you know applying for cards, those are those are two more buckets. If I have different types of credit, you know, yep. like so yep. so I'm going through all of the things that um, that I know. But if there's a faster, I got more. I got I got better things to do. <laughs> right. Exactly. Than looking at my credit. Facts. Right. And 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 learning the credit game. And if I hear you correctly. Uh, you've used artificial intelligence um, as a way to help people. You, you don't, they don't even necessarily have to learn about credit. This system will do it for them, right? Yes, yes. Um, and and, and you, you, said, you said something about factual disputes yep. and compliance. Explain yep. that for me. Yeah, so um, just to kind of make it make sense, the only one true way, I need everybody to hear me out on this one. This is real facts. Y'all can Google this. Yeah. The only one true way to repair credit is by way of factual dispute. That's mm. on the national credit exam. Mm. I took that past that. Mm. All my students take that past that. Mm. That's a, that, that is the only one true, that's a question on the exam. Mm. So that means if that's the only one true way, that means that everything else is, is, is illegal. Mm. I'm just gonna leave it there, right? Wow. So then the only other way that we could potentially attack, I'm using a totally different language, we can attack the credit bureaus and say, I want these items removed. Mm. It's not a dispute process. We're not using factual dispute and we use a compliance standard. Mm. So in 1997, the credit bureaus, the three, Trans, Experian, Equifax, and Experian, right? Trans, Equifax, Experian, and Innovis, my bad. Mm. The three plus Innovis, which is a secondary bill, they set together at the round table in 1997. Mm. They called themselves the CDIA, CDIA, the Consumer Data Industry Association. They mm. said, we're going to put together a standard in place that anything that's being reported to a consumer credit profile, it must meet compliance standards to even be reported. Mm. So we're factual disputing. We're pointing out, and we're talking about the factual nature, the owner, whether I own the account, if, is everything verifiable and complete? Mm. So we're talking about what's being listed and the factual nature of it. Whereas with Metro 2 Compliance speaks on reportability. Does it have the ability to even be reported? Mm. So there's five points of compliance and it's, we ain't got enough time to get into wow, the five yeah, points yeah, of compliance. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I'm, but I'm telling like there's five points in Metro 2 Compliance. Yeah. And one of them states is, this is one of the most, one of the biggest ones for me. If, if a data furnisher, which is, let's say the person you owe money, you owe AT&T a thousand, they, they want to report it. If they want to report that, 
they must meet five points of compliance. Mm -hmm. When you send in a letter and it states that this, these items are in compliance to even be reported, mm -hmm. if at and wanted to stay there, if the credit bureaus wanted to stay there, they must send carbon copies back and forth to each other. We some real carbon copies, mm -hmm. handwritten carbon copies, and they got to send a USPS mail to anybody that's involved with that account being reported. Mm -hmm. Who, ain't nobody doing that. A ain't nobody finna take their They're going to wow. say, look, this is not even worth the headache. Yep. This is not even worth the money. Mm. We good. So mm. with factual dispute, we talk about what's being reported in the factual nature, whereas Metro 2 Compliance say it, it can't even, it don't have the ability to be reported. Mm. Reportability mm. Right. versus what's already being reported in the factual nature of it. Right. So when you send in that letter, you're saying these items don't have the ability to be reported because they are in compliance to be reported. Mm. Anything... That jeopardizes anything that's not that's not being reported based upon Metro 2 compliance. It jeopardizes the integrity mm. of what's being reported. Mm. So it must be mandatory deleted. Wow. So this is why when we send in letters, Man. we send in a Metro 2 letter, you get a bankruptcy off. You're getting child support off. You're getting evictions off. Wow. You're getting all collections off. You're getting all derogatory remarks off. I don't care student loans. Wow. I don't care what's there. Wow. Because it didn't meet compliance standards to be reported. Wow. And so... What kind of results are like, that's crazy. What kind of results are you getting from that? Because that, because first of all, I think being able to use artificial intelligence to determine, you know, that, look, this is this not even in compliance. It just, yeah. just for my, it, it's, it's almost like, um, like, if, like I, I watch Law and Order a lot, right? Yeah. Yeah. And in Law and Order, you know, even if the cops, you know, and, and, and anybody who know this in real life, yeah. Even if the cops stop you and they find something illegal on you, yep. if they can't, um, like, if they stopped you illegally, whatever they found on you got to be thrown out. Yeah. Right? See? Because, 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 you know, if, if this was, like, if, if, if they bust in my house without, without a warrant or if, if they stop me without no probable cause, like, there's so many rules that law enforcement has to follow in order for... Um, whatever they find on you mm -hmm. to be legal or yep. admissible in court. Yep. That's what this sounds like, right? It's like, yo, there has to be a, there's a compliance standard. Yes, bro. Right? So even if it's something that you actually did, mm -hmm. if, the, if, this, if this doesn't meet the compliance standard, it, it's not even reportable. That's it. You can't even report it. That's it. And, and compliance and Metro 2 compliance, it also supports the Fair Credit Reporting Act and the Equal Credit Opportunity Act. Wow. Which means that equal opportunity means that me and Ash have to have the equal opportunity at wow. credit. Yeah. Fair credit report, that means everything must be reported fairly in order to be reported. Yeah. So at the FCRA, that's the breakdown of like consumer laws and yeah. all that, right? So that means that Metro 2 compliance, not only is it speaking to reportability, but it's also still going to point out all the infactual information too. Mm. So, it's, so it's, it's, still got a, it's still got a hint of factual dispute mixed into it as well because yeah. it supports the fair credit reporting act. Yeah. yeah. It's crazy, bro. Wow. And you know, you know why that's powerful because, you know, again, there's a lot of credit reports that are inherently just wrong. Oh, yeah. Right. And yeah. so a lot of us are yeah. accepting that we have bad credit yep. where sometimes it ain't, it ain't even, even really, fault. it ain't really your fault. Nope. You really don't have bad credit. Nope. You are relying on somebody else who's who's probably tired, yep. who's probably like not be not looking at things the way they need to. Yep look at it yep. and you're relying on them to tell you whether you qualify for something that can actually change your life that can actually build wealth here's a here's a here's a big part watch this you just said it we're relying on somebody else right so that means that our biggest expense in life truly is what we don't know mm. so that means that if we get educated we'll know here's a piece with metro 2 that everybody needs to know when we send in a letter, Ash, and you know this, when we send in a letter to the credit bureaus, a human is, as I said, a human is open it up. Yeah. Well, all the time, a human's open up the letter. But because they tired or humans have emotions, what they did was they removed humans from the, the determining factor of whether information is going to stay or get reported or not because there's not enough man hours. Yeah. It's millions of letters that go to the credit bureaus every day, mm -hmm. every mm -hmm. week, every yeah. month. Yeah. So there's not enough human man hours and manpower to read all these letters and we get tired. Yeah. So what we do is the human opens up the letter, yeah. but it gets fed into a machine. The machine mm -hmm. is E-Oscar. Mm -hmm. So E-Oscar, it's a determining factor when it reads the letters and all of the code and mm -hmm. it is determining whether items are going to get deleted or they're going to stay on your credit profile. It gets spit out and then the credit bureaus just say, hey, look, that's what E-Oscar said, mm. right? Guess what E-Oscar was built off of? Mm -hmm. Metro 2 compliance. Wow. Wait, 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 wait. You can Google this. Wait, hold on, hold on. Hold on. So you're telling me, <laughs> you're telling me 
that when you sit in a letter of dispute yep. to one of the, the three credit bureaus, and yep. let's talk about that four. I never heard of that fourth one either, Innovis, so we're going to yeah. talk about that. But, you know, the, the three credit bureaus, TransUnion, Equifax, Experian, yep. Um, most most of the letters are open, or all the letters are opened up by a human being, mm -hmm. but they're not the ones reading it. Mm -hmm. They're putting the letter inside a machine called eOscar. Yep. eOscar scans through it yep. uh, to see if it's compliant. Yep. And you've built a system. Yep. That is the basis of what eOscar is showing. Yep. Called Metro Two. Yep. And that Metro Two compliance is what's sending the letter out. So now it's almost like a cheat code, if you will, because now once you send the letter that's based on, it's like a, it's like a cycle. You send the letter based on what the machine is going to use yes. to the person who's going to open the letter and yes. put it in the machine. Yes. That's, that's exactly what I'm saying. You Drop mic. <laughs> Drop the mic. Yeah, bro, that's, that's what it is. And yeah. so... Um, and y'all can Google this. This is facts. Yeah. You can Google what is eOscar. It says eOscar is an online web-based Metro 2 compliance online system. Wow. So it's it's basically, it's, it's built off Metro 2 compliance. It has all of the coding and all of the documentation. So with my system and my system, just for everybody, who, they, they watch and they say, well, what is the name of his system? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's called Phenom, yep. right? My system that I created is called Phenom, which is the, you know, the root of Mr. Phenomenal, yeah, Mr. right? That's Phenomenal. me. Yes, sir. So yes, sir. I created Phenom. And Phenom literally generates and creates Metro 2 compliant letters, mm. and it has all of the coding that directly communicates with eOscar. Mm. So when you send in the letter, it's sending in a coding that's saying this account is incompliant, it must mm. be deleted, incompliant, delete, incompliant, delete. Wow. And so eOscar just reads and it says, it's just a machine. It ain't mm. no human. Wow. It ain't, it ain't got no feelings. Wow. It just said, all right, cool. It said, uh, delete, okay, delete, all right, delete. All right, cool. Wow. The only thing that the credit bureaus can do at that time, because, again, if y'all don't know this either, this is good information for y'all to know. When you default or not pay somebody and they want to report it, right, or anything that's being reported on your credit profile, the, the credit bureaus are getting paid to report. Mm. So when you got a T-Mobile bill, T-Mobile is paying the credit bureaus, let's just say, $25 a month. Mm. They saying, they, I got to pay them $25, $25, and $25. So the credit bureaus is like, dang, they sent in a letter. Mm. They sent in a Metro 2 compliant letter. Let me try to stall them out. Mm. So they're trying to send you a stall letter because mm. they already know they're they not a complaint, but they want to still get paid. Right. So they're trying to send you a stall letter to try to get you to not send out another round of letters or whatever. Mm. Man, keep going. Mm. If you ever get a stall letter from yeah. the credit bureaus, you got to just keep going because the truth is that they get paid to report these items so they got a quota they try to make money too Facts, yeah, they ain't yeah. no non-for-profit now i i want to say um I, I looked at a report that said uh the credit bureaus made like like 2.1 billion dollars off of reporting and Crazy. most and most of it is wrong and reporting. most of it is wrong yeah there was and there was a like you said there was another study and that study showed that it was like 60,000 people in like an eight month time frame that complained and said, Yo, I got inaccurate information on my, um, on my credit profile. And that was just the 60,000 that they did of complaints that they decided to open. Mm. You know, mm. it was millions. But when they read them, like 80 to 90% of those 60,000 complaints, like people that were sending in, like, inf like to the credit bureaus, it was all complaints saying, yeah. This is wrong. This shouldn't be there. This is shit. So it's like you got people that's really like, you sitting at home and you 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 got bad credit and you okay with that. Yeah. And and you got somebody else that's holding you back from yeah. being able to live the lifestyle that you want, the yeah. lifestyle that your kids want, the lifestyle that your family deserve, yeah. the lifestyle that you desire because credit is holding you back. Right. Like wow. credit is the gatekeeper. I mean, I don't, I don't know how people ain't getting this. Facts. Yeah. Like this is real. Like I, I promise, all of the success that I've been able to obtain is me leveraging my credit. Yeah. Having an unlimited Amex, having a Discover card, like yeah. twenty, thirty thousand dollar limits. You can go and do anything. Anything, bro. Like for for me to have yeah. right now, and this ain't this ain't bragging or nothing. This is yeah. I got one point two million dollars in credit, leverageable credit. Yeah. That, so it's like, where can I not go? Right. Facts. What can I not yeah, buy? 100%. And this is just me just having a good credit score. Right, right, right. And I ain't even got an 800. Right. I got a 760. Right. A 760 has got me in the dope right. everywhere. everywhere. When yeah. I go, I get special treatment. Absolutely. They opening the doors. Absolutely. If I go to the car, they like, we don't need no proof of income. Facts, you clearly doing something yeah. right. Yeah. So wh why won't you say, okay, let me start taking this credit thing seriously. Yeah. Let me, let me stop. Let me stop just being okay with the lifestyle that I got. Let me go get what I deserve. Yeah. Because it's, it's home ownership out there for somebody. Absolutely. Right? It's, 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 it's the car that you really desire out there for somebody. Yeah. So that's why 
but I, I, don't, I ain't told, but I'm going to do a free class for everybody. Mm. I'm going to put everybody on game. All they got to do is go to www. Look, just, look, I, look, I got just it. Just for the insiders, y'all. That's it. Exclusive. Exclusive. Man, talk to us, man. Go to www.metro2.live. Mm. I'm going to do a free. It's gonna, I'm going I'm to spend like two hours with them. Mm. I'm going to break down the whole Metro 2 game. I'm going to break down my software. I'm going to show you how to use it. Yeah. I'm going to do three things. I'm going to show them how to prepare their own credit. Yep. I'm going to show them if they want to use the system and the software, which is super easy. I'm going to show them how to start their own credit repair business because there's people out here need help. Yeah. If one out of every three people got bad credit, that's an income opportunity. Facts, and then if you already run in a credit repair organization, you use factual dispute and you're struggling getting results, Come on my way. I'm gonna mm. show you how. I'm gonna show you how to scale your business using my software. I got them, bro. Mm. I'm a whole. I'm, I, look, then I'm gonna get them my Metro Two book. I'm gonna give it to them for free too, yeah. so they can come to the class. Right, well, let's go. well let's versed. Go. Let's just, go. just for your people, bro. Let's I got go. them. Let's go. So, so, yo, listen, y'all gotta go. You just said Metro <laughs> Two Live. Yep. www. Metro Two dot Live. Dot Live. Uh, it's the number two. Metro number Metro two. Number two dot live. And, we'll, and, and we and we'll have it, you know, somewhere on the screen yep. so you, and, and in the description, so y'all can tap in. Tell me about this fourth reporting age or, yep. or this fourth thing. Yeah. Uh, is it a reporting yes. agency? Yeah, or? so there's a lot of secondary bureaus. And what the secondary bureaus is, they house the information. So what happens is, is when we send in a letter to the three main credit bureaus, they basically go get all of the information from secondary bureaus. Mm. So you got like Innovis, you got like uh, LexisNexis, yeah, you got like SageStream, yep, yep, you got yep. CoreLogix. Yep. So like LexisNexis, they housing all of the bankruptcy information. Mm -hmm. So like in my software... If you got a bankruptcy report, I'll show you how to like attack it on the three credit bureaus, but then right on the side, there's a tab where we got the secondary bureaus housed too. Mm. And original data furnace. So you can send a letter to them by just one click of a button. Boop, boop. Just like wow. that. So, so if you got a bankruptcy, we're going to send a letter to LexisNexis too. So we're mm. going we're gonna to tell them that it's in compliance to get it deleted. Mm. So then we'll get a letter back from... This is game. This is too much. Wait, hold on. This dude. is too much. This is too hold much. Hold on. I'm giving up too much sauce right now. Yo. This is crazy. Yo. So, so like you said, results, we get bankruptcies deleted. Yeah. First round, second round, just depends on your method of attacking. If you really paying attention, executing, using my software, right? Yeah. Like, so then you got like a company like a... Like a core logic, they they house all of the installment loans. Mm -hmm. So if a person has a repossession and they default on the repossession, mm -hmm. core logic gonna house that. Mm -hmm. Oh, we gonna attack them too. Wow, we, we coming at y'all head. Wow, we gonna we oh we gonna get that deleted. Mm. My mentee is getting repossessions off mm. bankruptcies. I even had one got child support deleted. Word. I'm like, so you ain't pay your, but you, but hey, that's <laughs> a whole that's a whole nother story. Oh, I mean, you know, it is what it is. Yo, and, and, and you know, and you know. Um, why this is powerful because specifically for our community, yes. um, I think our, our community have been bamboozled, yeah. hoodwinked, you, you led astray. You, you, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yep. As it relates to credit though, yep. because yep. Um, we're, you know, first of all, we're not taught about credit. Yep. And so early on, we mess up our credit. You know what I'm saying? So whether it's, you know, you know, mama putting furniture in the kid's name or whatever yep. the case may be. Yep. Yep. And so and so we we already off the gate have this bad taste with credit. Yeah. Then when we get into the to the working space, we're being taught um, about how to get rid of credit, don't even use credit. That's crazy. But then when you cross a certain threshold threshold, thresh whatever, whatever that is. Threshold. Threshold. Now you need it, huh? Right. Now you start, you start like, mm. I use credit for everything. everything. I'm talking about, I'm talking about, I don't own a debit card. I cut my debit card. I will not use cash for nothing. Can I shake your hand, brother? Yo, Thank I you. don't use cash for nothing. Me neither. I use credit for everything. Um, I live off credit. Yep, me too. Right? I mean, you know, ta from a tax perspective, mm -hmm. I don't get taxed on none of the credit that I use. Crazy. Right? From a, a points perspective, yep. every time I, 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 I use money, I get points, right? I stay in the, in the finest hotels. Talk. Yo, 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 me and my wife went to New York uh, for the Cameron, Mace, and Jada Kiss concert, mm -hmm. and we stayed at the Ritz Carlton for free. I'm Wait. talking about Central Park. Mm. I'm talking about. I'm talking about like when you get out. They they hold the door. They call you sir. They yeah. You know what I mean? They got they got the fine champagne. wine, champagne, yeah, they, yeah, and they, all yeah. that. Like yeah. I'm talking about that that I, level. I get of living. that too. Don't yeah. I got you. <laughs> that level of living for free. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And people and people people they I don't know, they don't want that. Yo, yo. When 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 I when I when I'm on a plane, mm. I get I get into I get into the lounge for free. Crazy, bro. I get I get free upgrades to first class, bro. Crazy. 
you know, and I and I don't think people understand. Um, I mean, but you're 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 a mindset financial literacy coach. Um, what help us help us inside the vault, our insiders, change our mindset so we can look at credit as a wealth building tool and not as something that like it's not the boogeyman it's not yeah. freddy adjacent like this it's not yeah. the it's not the candy man like yeah. it's it's something that can actually help you live a wonderful life yeah i think you know I, you said something <clears throat> which is what i live by too is which is you know we we live off credit yeah and i don't and when people don't understand what we're saying they they're thinking that we're saying uh, we just use our credit cards but we don't pay the money back that's mm. not what we're saying not, not one what we're saying is that and these regular, ordinary, and what we would call organic transactions from a credit perspective, when we are going out the organic transactions, <clears throat> we are leveraging our credit. We're just yeah. using credit, and we're using the money that's in the bank that we were going to use anyway to pay Facts. the money back. That's Absolutely. all what we're saying. Yeah, yeah. But here's what I need everybody to understand. Just from a mindset perspective, we're not saying get your credit into a 700, 800 credit range and just go get a bunch of credit cards and just go run them up. We're not saying that. That's using credit. Mm -hmm. What we're saying is leverage credit. Mm -hmm. So there's a difference between using credit and there's a difference between leveraging credit. Mm -hmm. See, most people, they just, they were taught bad stuff because their mom or their dad or auntie, their uncle, anybody in the family, when they got a hold of a credit card, when they first started using it, they just used it. Yeah. So they would go and they would go shop and buy purses. They would buy stuff that was not going to give them a return on their investment. Yeah. Whereas we're saying leverage it. Don't just go use it. We're yeah. saying leverage it. So when I teach people to use their credit, I'm saying leverage it in the, in the aspect of if you're going to get a credit card, Go ahead and take that ten thousand dollar limit and put it into let's just say all right start your Airbnb business yeah, yeah, yeah. and then you start you took that ten thousand let's say you open up let's just say four units each unit costs you twenty five hundred dollars to start now that ten thousand dollars that you put into the Airbnb units if they bring you back let's just say a thousand dollars let's just say each unit is only giving you a thousand dollars back a month mm -hmm. that means that if we're getting four units we get four thousand dollars back per month that means that by the time we get into 90 days of having these airbnb units we could pay the bank back ten thousand mm -hmm. but now we got four thousand dollars hitting our bank account every single month that we mm -hmm. can't stop that's leveraging credit that's not using credit right. using credit you go spend it and you got to sit there and look at that stuff like mm -hmm. i didn't get nothing back from that yeah uh, you done win about a thousand dollar pair of balenciaga mm -hmm. you, they, you ain't getting no return it's on that nice. no Go ahead and like leverage that credit to make it an asset, make right. it an asset, make it bring it income. Right. Then when you get that income coming in right. that's producing, then you go then buy the balloons. The, then you get the yeah, then you get facts. the purse. Then yeah. you get the shoes. Then you yeah. get your hair. Then you take the trips out the country. Yeah. When y'all see people living these lifestyles and y'all say, Well, I want to be just like them. Yeah. It's not that they went just when they got a credit card facts. and just swiped it yeah. and with no means of paying it back because now that's just, they gonna repeat the cycle. Facts. This is why the conversation is not being had in the household and it's not being taught in schools yeah. because there's nobody who really understands it. Yeah. The schools get it, but that's just a concept. They're going to keep the rich rich and the poor poor. Exactly. They ain't going to break that. Exactly. That ain't even going to happen because if they talk about credit in high school, colleges, and institutions, people be like, eh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, you know, it, it'd be a different type of world. It'd be a different type of game. Yeah. But this is why I'm teaching it because I want people to really truly understand that if you leverage credit, and you leverage it the right way, the lifestyle that you want, you can really have it. Mm. Like, seriously. Yeah, yeah. But don't use it. Leverage it. Yeah, nah, and, that, and that's such a big bar, and I hope people are picking that up because at the end of the day, that's exactly what it is, is that the, the goal, you know, what we're taught in our community uh, is <laughs> that, you know, we have to work hard for money. Yeah. But we, you know, the truth is if you're wealthy and you want to create wealth, yep. you have to change that relationship. You yep. have to make sure that money is working hard for you. Correct. And how does money work hard for you is making sure that when you have access to money, right, whether it's your, your earned money or yeah other people's money you're taking that money and you're leveraging it Correct. right that's the key word Leverage. you're leveraging it to create income producing assets yep. and then now you're allowing those assets to actually pay you that's the piece. right and then now and so here's a deal here's a deal it's a bar catch this when you use money you lose money oh man yeah when you leverage money I couldn't find something that rhymes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But y'all get what I'm saying, right? right, right you right. use money, you lose money. Yep. You leverage money, yep. you something, you yep. know, the money grows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 all right. So, y'all, look, look, y'all. Y'all need to take Dion's free class, Metro 2 dot live 
where he's giving you a free ebook. Yep. He's going to break down this Metro 2 compliance to everything you need. This old way of thinking mm. where it's just factual disputing, learning about the 35, 30, 15, 10, 10, where it's yep. payment history, usage ratio, length of credit history, new mix, uh, you know, uh, 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 new credit credit mix. Like, yeah, that's cool to know, like, yep. just to, like, you know, all right, here's the knowledge. Yep. But when you learn about Metro 2, right, mm -hmm. Metro 2 compliance, like, what is it? That, that your credit has to look like, your credit profile has to look like in order to be compliant. And that compliance is what your credit score is being judged on. When you learn that game, you will be in the best position to learn how to leverage credit. And I'm sure you're going to go over that as well. Oh, yeah, I got you. Yeah. Right? How to <laughs> leverage credit. Because I think yeah. that's also the thing Yeah, is that we don't want people to have now all these people have these great credit scores, yeah, and they don't know where to they go. Doing it, yeah. Now, yeah, I, I speak on that. I touch on that in a free class yeah. too. Like, and I and I teach that man. This is that's big because it's like, okay, I, now I got good credit. Then what? Right. And so the fear of the then what, I address that too. So you gotta you gotta know what banks to go to. Yeah. You know how to apply. Why yeah. should you apply? What money you want? Because like I, I was talking to a, a young lady the other day, and she was telling me how she made a mistake. She's like, I now I, I had good credit. Yeah. She's like, now I, I made a mistake. She said I went and got a card, and she was like, I didn't know that it was a charge card. Mm. And she's like, I didn't I didn't know that. Yeah. And so I teach on the difference between a revolving line of credit and a charge card. Yeah. Revolving is okay. I owe you some money. Yep. I'm going to pay you back, you know what I'm saying, every single month yeah. until I pay the balance off. Charge yeah. says, hey, listen, that's more like those net 30s. Yeah. She didn't even know that it was it was actually a net 15. She mm. said, they wanted their money back in two weeks. I said, that was a net 15. Mm. Whereas she used up five, 10,000, and in two weeks, the money was due. Right. So that's a charge card. Whatever you charge, they want their money right Facts. back. So, yeah, yeah. you know, like you said, that education piece and understanding that is key. Yeah. And if you have good credit, to leverage it is key. And so people need to know where they need to go to, what's the requirements to apply. So I go over, I break all that stuff down yeah. too. So, so, you know, you made the decision to like leave, you know, your comfort zone. Yeah, for sure. You stretch yourself, you yeah. move your wife, your kids, your mother, um, tripled your expenses. Yeah. The, like the, you know, they say pressure out of the bus pipes or make diamonds, man. man. And diamonds. fast forward, um, great decision. Um, best decision ever. Best decision ever. If you could go back with the Dion we, with that we're watching right now, we could, we're sitting with right now, if you could give 18-year-old Dion um, some advice, what advice are you giving him? Oh, that's crazy. Um, man, I would I would have did a better job of uh, not only just leveraging my credit, but leveraging um, – OPA. Mm. So the first thing I leverage is OPM, mm -hmm. which is other people's money. Yeah. Um, I would have been a a uh, an advocate for leveraging OPA, which is other people's audiences. Mm. Um, and then I would also tap into leveraging OPR, which is other people's relationships. Mm. And so for me, um, I just I really just kind of realized the power in all of that. Mm. Um, I'm looking at the relationships that I am creating uh, with new individuals, mm. um, and then I'm looking at just by knowing certain individuals, I'm being I'm connected with other individuals, um, and then I'm watching people leverage me. Mm. Like like I'm having relationships with people, and they're saying, "Hey, listen, I want to get tapped in with you," mm. and then it gets them closer to other people too, mm. right? And then also like one of the biggest things is, and this is why I tell my mentees, leverage OPM, which is other people's money, to mm. be able to like go ahead and pay for a mentor. Mm. Like you take the bank's money, yeah, pay for you a mentor, yeah. And then you run all of the plays, uh -huh. and you pay the bank back the money. But then uh -huh. now you got plays that you run it and income, uh -huh. right? And those play, and, and you and you got those plays forever, and forever. Wow. So I'm leveraging OPM. Yeah. And then I'm leveraging the uh, now that I've got that coach and that mentor from leveraging OPM, I'm leveraging that mentor's audience, uh -huh. OPA, uh -huh. right? <clears throat> and then that's just that's just leveraging the relationship or other people's relationships and being able to not only get with your mentor but then anybody that they're associated with as well. And so if I can tell myself something, I would I would have told my eighteen year old self that. Oh, that's a, that's powerful. Yeah. So like if, if if we if we if we uh, coin this the uh, the Dion you know the you know the Dion method methodology, we're gonna call it ARM. Mm. Audience relationship money. Ooh, we you Look, just you just uh you just put me on something. You feel what I'm I saying? You. Like yo, Ooh. leverage the arm. Ooh, that's tough. Audience hey, relationship hey, money. Y'all heard it here yo. first from Ash Cash. Yo, leverage your arm. Leverage your arm. 
Ooh, that's tough. Yo! That's a bar bar. <laughs> hey, hey, yo. Look, don't try to steal it. That's look, my stuff. Look, Ash gave it to me. Leverage the arm, baby. <laughs> All right, y'all. Listen, man. Um, again, make sure y'all go to Metro2.live. Tap in with Dion. Uh, take his free class. It's, it's free exclusively for our insiders. Yep. Learn about Metro 2. Also, right, because I because I don't want you to miss this too, is that though, like once you get your credit right, if you're someone that's like, yo, I want to I, I want to figure out a side hustle or whatever, you can actually use his software. Yep. Matter of fact, you're not even using. You can leverage. leverage. Let's go. Right? Come you on. You can leverage his software yep. to now create a different stream of income for yourself. So tap in Metro2.live. Yep. Um, if people want to connect with you, where can they find yep. you? Uh, Instagram is at Mr. Phenomenal Power. That's at Mr. Dot Phenomenal Power. Uh, Facebook is just Dion Kupu. All other platforms is at Mr. Phenomenal Power. All right, y'all. We are closing out the vault. Another awesome episode of Inside the Vault with Ash Cash. Make sure you visit us, InsideTheVaultShow.com. Uh, follow us on all social media platforms at Inside the Vault. Me, I am Ash Cash. Make sure you visit me, I am AshCash.com. Follow me on all social media platforms at I am Ash Cash. And make sure you join the Abundance Community. Go to AbundanceCommunity.org. We got behind the scenes access. We got some, some, some gems that he did not give us on the show. So make sure y'all tap into the Abundance Community. Um, join us. We mastermind. We come together. We got chapter meetings. All of that great stuff. We appreciate you. Thank you so much. I need you to share this video. I need you to like this video. I need you to tag your friends. I need this, I need this video to go crazy. And also, I need you to subscribe to Inside the Vault. We're already in 26 countries, but we want to be in 100 countries. So make sure you subscribe, you rate, you review. All right, y'all. I'll see y'all next time. In God's will. Peace.